Eyes in the back of your head out there at the moment. It was a heavy hit from Hawkins. And Hawkins this time, delivered by Bartel. Well, he's a man mountain and he throws Cheney aside. And again, he's going to go back and have a set shot. Yeah, he's got the length. He, geez, he looked big then, didn't he? When he was pushing into Cheney, he looked... Please, move out. No, he's with him. The move weight out, and the Steve. bulk was uh, decisive. Steve, Steve, move out to five. He's standing next to you. Didn't change the oh dumper, Darcy, at half-time, eh? Yeah, Will Langford uh, was the man who ripped that open, and the uh, Hawk might have squared up a couple of minutes ago with a little one in the bread basket. He knows about big games, and he knows about kicking goals from outside 50 against this side. This an important goal. Fierce confidence for the Cats. And to get it back out to 13, well, you can't strike it much better than that. Only 13 points, but I feel like the Hawks are rattled. That's Luke Hodge kicking a two-step barrel from deep inside. That's high-risk play. It came off, but they have normally got so much more composure than Hawthorne. They'd run, they'd hold onto the footy. They're feeling the heat at the moment. So 13-point margin. Low-scoring game. How much can it open up in the last quarter? Mitchell again, another clearance from the centre. Mackey takes a chance, gets a bad bounce. Ruffy couldn't quite get a handle. Kelly again, well played. Mackey on the left foot out wide. Stokes the target with Hill. A couple of racehorses, Hill did well. Just back to Hawkins Lee for a moment. Just the two goals, but I feel like he's had a big, pre a big yeah, presence today. a big today. presence. Well, it's given, they've had the ability to actually to get, go in there directly. Hawthorne are trying to kick the ball in there precisely, which is uh, hard to do 20 times a game. Lewis sweeps the handle. Rioli forever creative. Gunston. Well, he tried to pave the way. Bruce caught up by Kelly. And the ball up. Yeah, he only that. had five disposals. He's, he's the one who needs a bit of magic to break it up. Here. He can get a bit Here. of ball forward of centre. And leads James Kelly, who's done the wonderful yeah, job fantastic. on him. And just a couple of crucial touches late, too, with his composure, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ruffy caught on the right boot. Mackey. Well, not 15, the umpire called, so... Stevie Johnson quickly to Bartell. Burberry. Well done. Two metres! Two metres! It's been an enthralling Thank contest. You. Still two minutes to play in this third term. Catch by 13. Hawks a chance here. Well, Simpkin, he attacked it hard and then Enright just held him up in the middle of this venue that has seen so many enthralling contests between these two. Hey, Lee, is the coach's spray still in vogue. Are you a fan of it? you think you'd go to Cyril Rioli at three-quarter time if you lost there, Clarkson, and say, hey, you seriously have to lift. We haven't enough I think Cyril's more would react to encouragement more than being uh, yelled at, which is the majority of players, I suspect, Darcy, yep. in that category. So Sirwood makes a mistake and set up Johnson, and a real chance for the Hawks here, but a sloppy kick again going forward for them. Mackey has to wait. Rioli's so quick onto him, as we said, so dangerous without the ball, Rioli. Scooped up and then goes back to Poppy. Popolo, now Birchall, he's just trying to create here. Now he's got a beautiful leg. He still couldn't get the run up. I think he could have had a shot a moment ago, but he just couldn't get quite the momentum. Simpkin takes them on. Left foot over the back. Bruce will get it. No, he, yes, he'll get a free kick. Geez, a good one on one a boost against Lonigan. It's well played by Simpkin, too, there. He really took a risk to get around the man on the mark, and that created the one on one. If he had gone back, they would have had time to get numbers back, but. He's a sort of player, Bruce. I'd love to see, see play state footy. I think he'd be a walk-up start for state of origin. I think he would just cope better and better as the standard got higher. Well, he's become the most dangerous forward for Hawthorne in this quarter. It's his third shot on goal, and he gets his second, and Hawthorne closed the gap. Well, it has been some sort of a contest. Twice the Cats have got out to 13 points, and the Hawks have found a way to answer and they are right on track to turn this into one of the classics. Selwood, long ball, McIntosh or Gibson read it like he'd seen it before. Hasn't happened a lot this afternoon though, Hammer. They've played Josh Gibson pretty well today. Just 13 disposals and made him play on his man one-on-one, -on -one, which is what everyone tries to do, but it's not that easy. Well, a long ball now. Hale and Dawson, the big men. Dawson just got a pour on it. McAvoy did well. Hill, Ruffy, off a step. 
In right. Well, he just got pushed under it. Oh, Shade to him. <coughs> you. So three points, six, and right now, seven as we head into the shadows of three-quarter time. Move it on. Play on. You. So Selwood, the chosen one. So just his 14th disposal. He's got busy in the last few minutes. Good kick. High. So they're Sam, playing the Hawthorne game here a bit. Watch the high one, Sam. Thank Murdoch, you. an important Fire. goal in this quarter. His run and carry has Go. thwarted Hawthorne once before in round 15 last year. McIntosh couldn't quite. Ball and Smith, well done, Virtual. Right the knees. Oh, gee. Oh, that's yeah, that's, that's a sliding tackle. But sometimes you wonder which one goes in. I thought Birchall had got down before Hall and Smith. Anyway, it's a free kick, and we that is the rule. And Hall and Smith to take a, a very important shot on goal in the last seconds here. So, oh, that's, what do you reckon? I reckon that's pretty stiff. So oh, it's still confusing, that rule. He's got to have clear run of the ball. I don't think he actually clipped his legs in the end. Uh, because that's going to be a free kick every time, the way so? I understand the rules. If you go down onto the footy and you go into the lower yeah. legs, you're... Opponent's automatic free kick if the umpire sees that. So right on three-quarter time, this is massive, isn't it? Seven-point game at the moment. Paul and Smith has missed it. So they've missed... Oh, that's an awful kick, really. And mm, McIntosh in the opening term. Hall and Smith, the harder shot, admittedly, there. But, well, they've won every quarter, Geelong. Not by much, but they've increased their lead to eight points. It's been a magnificent game, and I'm sure we're set for a classic finish between these two great teams. At three-quarter time, Geelong leads Hawthorne by eight points. It's 68 to 60. The three-quarter time break brought to you by Carlton Draft. Well, it's a game that's lived up to all expectations. Geelong by eight points at three-quarter time with assistant coach Brett Ratton. And Brett, I noticed you spent a bit of time with Isaac Smith during that three-quarter time huddle. What was the message for him? Oh, it was just more about when we had the ball and how we could get him into the game and use his, uh, his legs to you know, really give us some run and carry. So hopefully he can get into the game and we'll change his position a little bit as well. Rats, Geelong have been able to limit you to 36 entries inside 50s. How, how do you get the run going? Not just Isaac Smith, but how do you get those other players into the game to open Geelong up a little bit? Yeah, we'll probably kick the ball a little long in the game and allow Geelong to sort of make a contest in sort of the middle of the ground, and they've won those, those battles. So hopefully we can move the ball a bit quicker by hand and not just be so stagnant with the footy. Sean Burgoyne's been really good for you in really tight games. Yep. Great in the prelim final last year. Are you going to put him on the ball a little bit more in this last quarter than what you probably have used him on the ball in the, in, during the game? There will be a shift there. Um, he's one that can really ignite us and he you know, gives us great flexibility. So he'll be around the footy uh, in the quarter. And Cyril, how can you get Cyril more into the game as well? Well, hopefully we can get the ball inside 50 a bit more and give him some opportunities. You know, they've, Geelong have done a really good job there, so hopefully we can uh, change that. Thanks for your time, Rats. Good really on Good stuff, Tim and Cam. Rioli, five disposals only in the match. It's quite well, remarkable. Well, that's the thing. He's such a wonderfully talented player, but he can have his games and quarters and halves where he just disappears. I mean, just and, uh, and today, that is one of those. Now, we talked about captaincy before the match. We talked about Selwood and Hodge and just what they bring to a club. This is the moment. These are the moments that you look for your leaders, don't you? Mackie subbed out, by the way, for the Cats, so sharing a moment. So that, that leadership mm. now becomes really important. That's interesting to see Mackie. Mm. I would have uh, thought that, that would have to be injury related. We'll, we'll get yeah, the boys well, to check on that. Well, he had the course, sure. last week, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, so maybe yeah. That, that's the case. But you're right, they're so good, Lee. Both those players, Selwood and Hodge, seizing the moment. Neither have had their best ever games today, it has, it has to be said. Hodge, 13 possessions, Joel Selwood, 14. But you have the feeling that they're capable of doing it again today in the last quarter. Well, Hodge has been out, obviously playing out of the back half for the majority of the game. And I guess they've been under pressure down there, Hawthorne, in turn. There'd be a lot of quick kicks out of there because the Geelong forward pressure has been uh, so good. But as we... Uh, McAvoy's as we gone too, in, Lee. McAvoy's out. Isn't McAvoy's it? been subbed off. So Hale in the ruck and Hodge into the centre square. So he's been introduced into the, into, right into the action now. 
So what a time for Mitch Hallahan to debut for the Hawks. He plays his first half an hour of AFL football on his side. Trails by eight. Hodge, uh, it's desperate stuff now. Fine, it's amazing you. though, you take off your slowest player, which is your Ruckman you. McAvoy. Okay, you might be a little bit down in the hit-out department, but you should be a much quicker team over the, uh, over the remaining 21. So an hour and a half has been played in the last 30 minutes about to be played out and still we're no closer to knowing who wins. Langford works it through. Hodge, the pressure was good from Bartell. Birchall, clever over the top. It might have been suckling. They work it down. Well, first touch for this debutant. 21 years of age, he's been on the list for three years. And he gets going early. Hodge. It's all about the bounce now and it skips away. Bruce, clever. Well, Taylor Hunt did a good job. Just sheepdog him over. Talk about turning to your big guns early on in an important last quarter. The centre bounce there for Hawthorne was Luke Hodge, Sam Mitchell, Sean Burgoyne. Just real experience in the middle part of the ground for the Hawks. Speaking of Burgoyne, speaking of Hodge, and now Bruce, goal. Lingy, good call. He's good in, he's one of the best players, players Burgoyne, I reckon, we've ever I seen. I this could be really significant that Hale's gone into the ruck there for Roughhead will back him up. Hawthorne, I think, might just have the extra legs through that uh, substitute. Well, he and Ruffy came into this match with 12 apiece for the year, and Brewster's kicked the last three for the Hawks. Quickly, they go out of the middle and again, off. and again, it's his debutant, Hodge oh, to Hallahan. Oh. So, Bruce having a real influence, and now to Birchall. Me. Oh, look at this, Cyril. Leads Taylor Hunt to the ball. And now Cyril to take responsibility. Well, it's good coaching, isn't it? And it makes sense. You get your absolute stars around the footy, as Lingy pointed out. You make sure Luke Hodge is near it. Sean Burgoyne is, is a champion of the game. And, and let them do their stuff. And so far, so good in the final quarter. He hasn't had a big afternoon, but maybe... He has a big moment. It started at the point post. Oh, the goal post and just drifted to the left. So, as expected, it's tight in the fourth. Cats by a point. Three clearances and three clearance wins to Hawthorne. I think Hodge has had two of them. Yep. He's been massive in a, in a little yeah. cameo here, Hodge. So, Geelong suddenly on the back foot. Rivers has played well. And he's finding his feet. Been injury prone a bit Good even on. at Melbourne and Me. at Geelong. <laughs> Johnson, a, a superb game. The odd indiscretion, but on. Play on. it's been quite brilliant. And he plays the percentages down the line. Well done, Taylor. Oh, against Hodge. Slow movement by Geelong. Just careful for the moment. Taylor off that step. Blitzarves has to wait. They protected no, uh, Duncan. Well, he's been Play good, on. Duncan. Quickly goes. Not a great looking kick off Play the boot, on. but he gets the ball deep. Simpson against Gibson. Well, no, nope in the back. Hawkins gets it out. McIntosh sweeps it back. Bartell couldn't get it. Burgoyne just got in the road. Jeray Langford. Hale, that was good by the big guy, Hale. Well played. And gets to Birchall. A little bit of poise for Hawthorne there. We haven't seen a lot of that. Hill now to Hodge. Hodge so important in the first moments of this last quarter. Clev, well, it was the sight was there. I mean, the peripheral vision was brilliant. The ball just couldn't stay in. Hodgie's lifted, no question about that. And he'd be loving the opportunity, Hodgie, to run through the midfield and try and drag his side over for a big victory here and a really important game. Four touches already for the Hawks skipper. Make it five. Hey, I've got a boot on. He's got a boot to it. You heard the umpire, Mitchell. Brilliant. Below the knee, Mitchell. Get your feet, please. He's on the mark. So Cats have only had five touches themselves for this term. Hodge Out. Go to one. Go. leading from the front. Hale, he saw the lead. Oh, terrific Good stuff. Man. Gunston against Lonigan and Taylor. They were the two Geelong players getting near the contest, and Gunston did them both. Kicking's been interesting today. In this part of the ground, Hawthorne have kicked as well as ever, that inside 50 ball. And yet at half-back, they've had some of the worst clanging kicks I've seen in two or three years. Well, he's been such a find. 15 gone. Two grand finals in his two years. 39 in his first, 46 last year. He needs to kick a third here. And he sneaks it in. He's got three. 
And the Hawks are in front. Seven lead changes. OK, in a word, Lee, who wins? Oh, Hawthorne, the way they're going. Hawthorne from here, Bruce. Hawthorne for me. And it hurts me to say this, but I think Hawthorne too, a lot more run. Geelong look tired at the moment. OK, so we're with the Hawks for the moment. Sharing them out of the centre. Geelong haven't really been able to get a handle on the ball at all in the last quarter. Birchall swinging. And then out wide to Jeray. Good mark. And then Jeray with a little one. One of the ironies about today is the Hawthorne goal spread, but really in the end it's Bruce and Gunston that's kept them going with their six goals between them. Six of the ten. So Smith talked about it three-quarter time. Long ball. Gunston, good mark. Well, he's really come alive. He had a terrific opening quarter. Quite his second and third. Probably not a lot of delivery in there. But a big mark and a big goal so far in this term. Then off a step. Gets the ball forward. Roughhead made the contest. Buopolo does in right for pace. Arches his back. Or just couldn't get a handle on it, Bruce. Taylor, Enright, Johnson. They've got to be brave here. Stokes, they are. Sheringham to Hunt. Now Geelong are on the move. They've mopped up, but Cyril brings Johnson to ground. Taylor Hunt cleans up. There's no one there except Burberry who flies from behind. Now it's wrapped up underneath it all is Jeray. Well, right now, Hawks have got the momentum. They've kicked the last three. They've lost the last three quarters after losing only two quarters for the year. But right now, they're in front. Smith, one of the best runners in the game, just gets held up. Back to Simpkin. And now suddenly it goes downtown Hallahan, not quite Rivers. Well, Enright, Kelly, he's been terrific all day. And now Stokes. Can you? No, I thought he was going to kick long. Now McIntosh, the big man with all the strength, he's in the right position again. Well, we haven't seen it have for a while, but it's always been the worry going forward is that the big height, the big strength advantage of Hawkins and McIntosh, when they've had one-on-ones, they've really caused the Hawthorne defence trouble. Well, Tommy Hawkins, he thought through it, he's got three, eighth lead change, Cats in front by a point. So the big forwards playing a part in the last quarter. We saw Gunston and now Hawkins. Yeah, they've really been able to expose this part of the ground for me, Geelong. They have had Hawkins in one-on-one -on -one situations. He has looked really capable. So too, McIntosh. So the Cats back in front. Eight times the lead's changed. Good tackle, Rioli. Trying to impose himself. Hallahan out of the centre to full forward. Gunston and Lonigan. Lonigan against the flow. The handball and scores a level. All tied up. Well, you were here on the Saturday night when Hawkins was so important against Collingwood in the last quarter. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think he's got his mojo back, Tom Hawkins. He had an enormous amount of drama last year, carried a back injury. And he's just got that, you used the word before, Mac, a presence. He, he really has got a big presence on the field here. Well, they've done everything, these two teams, except Hamish have a draw. So what happens here now? Well, they're capable of anything. Hall and Smith to Varco. He gets through the tackle of Suckling. Can he get through Lewis? No, Lewis was brilliant. And he tries to work his way through Lewis. Birchall gave support. Bartell just burrows through. Terrific. Stokes. Now again, it's Hawkins. Cheney right spot. He was brave. High. High. My contact. Well, he's stuck between Hawkins Thank you. and McIntosh. And he stood his ground and... The Hawks come away. That'll get it a game next week. It was a terrible kick by Stokes, actually. It was yeah, neither one or the other. Done better in terms of finding a target, but great play by Tuni. Yeah, courageous. Hodge released into the midfield, having a big last quarter. And the other one that's been released is Burgoyne. Careful kick. Well done, Lonigan. Roughhead. Good kick forward. A bit of a chaos kick. Well played by Kelly. And he is so good. Kelly's last quarter against Adelaide, I thought, in round one was just magnificent. In the off half-back, Ian Seward with the difference, and right now, they'll need something big from him. Mackie, of course, out. We believe he must have tightened that hammy. Scores level. It has been a beauty. Simpson. 
back to Hill. Had a lot of the ball again today. Hill kicks to full forward. A one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, well done, Gunston. He slipped Lonigan. He's become a class four. I mean, Lonigan is a class big defender. Very hard to get the ball in the air against Lonigan, but both his judgment and just his movement and his strong hands out in front, he's been... Uh, Excellent today, I reckon, right, Gunston. And Lonigan had Franklin a lot when he's played against all these. He's had a cloak. I reckon this bloke's been probably more of a handful than any of them well, today. Well, this, this is the credit, really, to Gunston. He's been identified as Hawthorne's most dangerous go-to forward, and Lonigan's got the task, but Gunston has done really well. Well, we know he's such a good kick for goal. Oh, but Hawthorne lead by a point. Since the 08 Grand Final, these guys have played each other 12 times. Extraordinarily, 10 have been less than 10 points. Two have been decided after the siren. And in that sequence of 11 wins for the Cats, they came from 26 points or more four times to win. And right now, it's the Hawks by a point. Varco. Oh, that was genius to Dawson Simpson. Can he get there? Will it settle? Gibson had the pace. Dawson wanted Varco. Suckling. Gibson. Well, every ball, every possession, every oh, moment. Can... Right now, hard fought. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Here, here. Callahan. In his first 13 minutes of AFL football. In front of a big crowd. It's me. Stokes. Well, it was creative. And it's worked out. So Murdoch, you know, can get the distance. Important goal in the third. This right the a set shot. The young man to put the Cats right the back in front. 15 go! Can he grasp the moment by the neck and give it a thorough shake? Oh, it's a nice kick. He has kicked the Cats in front. He's got two. Lee changed nine. There you can see on screen there, that is not Walker. That's not Josh Walker, number 34. That's Tom Hawkins. That's his third jumper that he's worn this afternoon. It looks a little bit tighter than his other jumper, too. Do you names on the back, Tim? I didn't think they'd create that many problems. So, Hunt. What a game. Well, that was a flick by uh, Lewis, but OK. McIntosh, really good there, McIntosh. Well done. Selwood, that quietly stay, but a probing kick to full forward. Oh. And Walker, no, Hawkins <laughs> takes the mark. He's going to burst out of that jumper, Tom Hawkins. It's about three sizes too small. Well, thank God it's not Matty Stokes, is it? Let's have a look at his day, Tom Hawkins. He has had some big contested marks inside 50. There it is on Chaney once again. He got hold of Gibson on the lead. This again, 15 kilos biggest than uh, Kyle Chaney is, and he's used his strength to advantage. And again, a big moment now. You can see there it was. Spiralling torpedo, low, yeah. low, low, which are low delivery. And Lee, I reckon the side. first thing you said to me today was, who gets Hawkins? I mean, we were yeah, trying, yeah. And, and his presence has been huge. Been. He could kick a fourth here and give Geelong some breathing space. He has. He's a big-time player. So a terrific crowd, over 80,000. So by far and away the biggest crowd so far in this home and away season prior to this 63. So 80 plus here, and they've seen a magnificent game. Hawkins is fourth, give Geelong a break. So they lead by 11. They've never been further in front than 13. Oh, you got it? You got it? So Selwood. Goes searching for his old mate, and he finds him, Bartell. Talk about big game players. Well, this time, he stumbles, but he recovers, and the second kick, well, it finds a hawk again. Birchall. I love their instinct with the Cats. They don't know how to play safe. Joel Seward then said, you know, I'll kick it straight down the middle to centre forward, and I'll back Bartell that he's good enough in the one-on-one. At this stage of the game, they've got so much self-confidence in themselves and their teammates. How well they've protected the space 50 metres from the footy. This Hawthorne just can't find. Make him kick it up in the air. That's a win for Geelong. Ruffhead held up beautifully by Taylor. And Johnson takes the mark. So Johnson, another fantastic performance today. He's up to 30 disposals. Yet again, kicks to half forward that 
precise kick to Burberry. Clear out. Next goal, if Geelong get it, will be telling. Kicks to full forward, he's got it again. Well, Brian Lake, not quite ready today. We know that, the Norm Smith medalist. But he's monstered them in the end, this bloke. It's, it's, it's not Walker, we know. Yeah. <clears throat> be an interesting thing to find out. If Brian Lake was 75% fit, I mean, I know Hawthorne don't take risks. Would you have been tempted, Lee? I well, mean, he was playing, he was in emergency, so the fact he was emergency he must have been fit. But I guess it's a matter of they went with the, with the crew that's match-hardened rather than the big body. Well, he's gone from a, a good performance to really the match winner, hasn't he, in the last quarter? He's had a lot of set shots today. You'd back him now because everything's happening. Straight through, he's kicked a handful, and that's what he is right now. And Geelong make their big move. He's just giving them the target in there. And all of a sudden winning the clues as they've won the last five Geelong so uh, whereas Hawthorne dominated the first few of the last quarter Geelong have completely taken over again well Bruce kicked the last of the third and the Hawks kicked the first two of this and the Cats the last four and you sense if you're a Cats fan you think you're a long way from home Burgoyne top of the square uh, free kick Cyril So we're back to 11 points. There's a lot of time left. So there's the free kick. Tackle, yeah, I think it's there. So Rioli and Burgoyne's ability to run and carry there. So back to 11 points. It's like going to Phantom of the Opera. You've seen it so many times, but you still enjoy it, don't it doesn't you? Let you down. the end's different every time. <laughs> yeah. You're never sure what the end's going to be. Hale. Hall and Smith belted off it by Hallahan. He's looked at the park. Simpson, geez, uh, combative Simpson, isn't he? Five footy. And the ball up. So no down. Mackie in the last quarter. Right now, the fans yep. of both sides are rather not fan of the opera. It'd be one of those novels where you can choose your own ending. Right <laughs> it's a long wait for fans of both of these outfits. Lewis, third man up. Well done. The clearance from Mitchell. Searching. Rivers has done a lot of intercept and marking today. Out wide. Blitzarves, good mark. You know, as Amy said, Hawthorne have got time and you believe they'll have one big crack Move here. They get out of tight situations, the Hawks. Blitzarf's kick to centre wing, over the top, carried them. Suckling to Lewis. And here they come through the middle, Hill with that dash. Long ball, Gunston, he's been the target all day. Harry Taylor. He saves the day. He certainly yep. saves the moment. Still, so much to be played in the last few minutes. Who gets their hands on it first here? Hallahan, taken to ground. Footy. Said earlier in the week, uh, Hammer, that Joel Searle would select Jared Ruffett as the player that he would like to play for the Cats if he had his choice. Luke Hodge decided that he would have Harry Taylor in his side if he could take one out of the Cats team. And you just saw Harry Taylor then. He's, he's an enormous player. And Selwood. To the man wearing someone else's number, but he has been a huge target this afternoon. Now McIntosh, he's a big target. Gibson's got to beat him. Burberry, well, he's got a few to beat, and he beats them quickly to Stevie J. Can he get around Mitchell? Almost gives it to Stokes. Now the big man again. Blitzarves, McIntosh, Gibson with a monumental spoil. Who's there first? Selwood. Can he get around Jeray? A bit of space, first man there, Enright, he's already kicked one, it was similar, can he kick another? The old man from the Cats, the old stager from Kimber, he gets him back out to 17 points. He's hardly kicked a goal in his career, and he's kicked two this afternoon. Yeah, well, that equals his career high. He, two great goals finish. is his career high. Great finish, but wasn't Selwood, I mean, he's only had an average go by his standards, but the ball just came off hands. He just, as he's done so often, wills himself to it, Gets through a few tackles, sets up the play with a bit of space, which was in right. Almost identical goals. Chris Scott, I, th I think he loves it. He uh, doesn't look happy, does uh, he? looks uh, like uh, he's annoyed they've kicked a goal. Yeah, the tension's uh, just coming out, but it was a one-step kick almost from Enright. 
That's incredibly hard to do from that range. He's kicked two ripping goals. Last time he kicked two goals in a match was six years ago. He's kicked two in the second half today. Geelong gets some breathing space. Simpson back. Taylor belting forward. Johnson marks. We can do nothing else here but uh, take 30 seconds off the clock and try and kick the goal at the same time. No other thought in his mind. He knows exactly the state of the game. I tell you one thing, Lee, he won't do it in an orthodox fashion, I reckon. I reckon he'll <laughs> run slightly out to the side. He'll... This is sort of on his range. He kicked a wonderful running goal That's early. I mean, except for Hawkins' explosion in the last quarter, he's been the best man on the ground yeah, for four quarters. Yeah, yeah. Early in the game, he was the key. So 32 touches and four goals in the prelim final, the last time they play one another. This might just be the icing on the cake. It looks good. He's done it again, Stevie J. Well, I said it about Goods a couple of years ago. Come at the time, come at the moment, come at the man. He is yeah, just, he's a football genius that can really make a difference. Well, and today chaos. we've seen him at nearly his best. The chaos, it's just the long kick into the forward line. Then it's a question who can root it best. He picked the ball off the boot and forward should. Whenever your team kicks the ball out of the centre into your forward line, the forward should be able to read the ball uh, the best and the quality ones. And he's won. Hey, Lingy, you played a lot of footy with that man there. He loves the big stage, doesn't he? He thrives on it. It's where he feels most at home. Yeah, absolutely, Darcy. I remember him as a young player coming to the club. But he reckons, uh, he might not like me saying this, but he was born to play in front of 80,000 at the MCG. Loves the big games against the good opposition. Well, he kicked that goal with four minutes exactly on the clock, and the Hawks need four goals. Here's Johnson again. What can he do? Johnson, can he kick another? Not this time. Well, right now, the Cats are on the brink of breaking the Hawks. They're on the ropes, but you've got to remember, this is an outfit that can score quickly. One more... Cats at home. 50 metre penalty, so Hodge to bring it into the centre now. Run, They've just got to really take every risk in the book here, Hawthorne. They must score from Hands this off. attack. Hands off. There's no real scoreboard pressure on Geelong right at the moment. It's four goals. It's the Matthews theory, isn't it? <laughs> goals and minutes. Well, here we go. Lining up, belting hard and long. Hallahan, has he got it? He has. Lee, where you go? Three goals, three minutes. Yes, that's only when you're the coach of the team in front. That's when you start relaxing, Matt. That's my theory. <laughs> I so at this you... point, you're definitely not relaxing. When you, Chris Scott, three and a half minutes to go, three goals to Hawthorne would get them in front. So, uh, you know, the tension in the co Geelong coaches boss would not have eased yet. He has looked out of place. This man on debut, no, he's good. Mitch he's been good. Uh, Five yeah. possessions, a big running goal, and a bit of composure. Won the composure won the list of medal last year in the VFL as the best player. So he's. Uh, Coming to a baptism of fire, hasn't he, on a big stage? Well, the Cats. They've got the Hawks in check. But they're a long way from checkmate. Knowing what this Hawks outfit can do, quickly they win the clearance again. There's a heap of Cats at the fall of the ball. Bartell, Simpkin, Rioli's so clever. Bruce, for Kelly. He's been significant and influential afternoon. Stokes, Harry Taylor. Now a big one-on-one. -on -one. A couple that haven't seen a lot of these big games. Burberry and Jure. Birchall. Back to Jure. He'll want his left boot. He'll come back inside. And it, well, it caught him in the end. The old the left ball. footer, eh? That's, they, the ball that's one time when the left foot didn't work for them. They had two left footers in the wrong spot. Birchall and Jure. And great tackling. Go forward, Taylor. And Geelong hold them up. And they can work it a bit here and work the clock down. So it was Geelong that finished Hawthorne's big run last year of 12 consecutive. And it looks like they're going to do it again this year. Well done, Ruffy. Gets it back. Hallahan again. Now, can Ruffy wind it up and go long to the goal square? All the numbers with the Cats. DeRay taken out. But uh, just there. Just there. No, no further. Taylor takes the mark. So Harry off a step. Johnson a target, out wide, good mark taken by Hale. Mark, Hale, play on. Sorry, mate. The Hodge, well, it's an ugly shot of a ball. And Bartell, we spoke to him pre-game. We talked about whether he'd just drift down when it got really tight. He's... Play on. 
right where the cats want him now. At half back, drifting across and taking marks. Johnson. Burberry, Stratton rides him hard, runs into Hodge. The clock has 96 seconds on it. Well, McIntosh. That's the free kick. And importantly, time will tick. Thanks. Yeah, it's a lot to this team for me, Hamish McIntosh. Fit and well. I think he's had a, a brilliant game this afternoon. Taking marks forward and starting to uh, reap a bit of uh, return from the investment they've paid in uh, Hamish McIntosh. Johnson's kick. Hawkins couldn't quite this time. Cheney only as far as Varco. Hold David. So the Cats have got it. Short to Stokes. Mitchell picked it off. Simkin. Mitchell back to Simkin. Good stuff. Jaray and now Burgoyne. Bit of a sloppy handball. And Burgoyne had to search and search and couldn't quite hunt. Got a cross in front of him. And then hunt strongly and then cut off in a boundary throw in. So round 22 is the next time these two teams will play one another. So very deep into the season, the second last round. We're not going to get that really close finish that Hamish talked about, but it's felt like a really close game, hasn't it? Selwood at his combative best there. Long ball, and now it's Hawkins wearing someone else's jumper again. He has been a colossus. <laughs> That's the word, Hamish. He's been fantastic this second half. And here's a man with speed. He can go over the top to Burberry. Well, time being eaten up is as good as a goal. And he'll kick it after the siren. What an afternoon. Ten lead changes. The Kennett's curse may be dead and buried, but the Cats and the Hawks remain a box office smash hit. <laughs> the Cats win in one for the ages. They're undefeated and they're on top of the ladder. Well, the two great clubs, eh? the two great teams with their champion captains came to the G today. And it was an arm wrestle before 80,000 people Something had to give, they were both unbeaten. Top of the table clash, 1v2. And yet again, the Cats have prevailed over the Hawks. In the end, in a classic, it was 15-16 to 12-15. What a beautiful...